TK, uh, fellow Rotarians and guests. I'm just so pleased to introduce our uh, speaker for today. He's a native Ohioan from Portsmouth. He graduated from Columbus St. Charles in 1967. He has his bachelor's degree from Ohio Dominican in 71, a master's degree from Xavier University in 73, and his PhD from Bowling Green in 1983. He served in, uh, before taking a job with the association, he served Ohio schools for 30 years. He's been a teacher, he's been a coach, he's been a guidance counselor, he's been a principal, and of that 30 years, 21 years he was a superintendent. Some of you may remember Dr. Ross, he was a superintendent at Pickerington schools for 11 years. Tremendous uh, background. Incidentally, I had called his secretary for his bio. I don't know if you can see it, but I got like two pages. And I've condensed it. Uh, he's just a fantastic individual. If you've ever seen the uh, OHSA Final Four, the state basketball tournament, back in the 80s, you probably saw Dr. Ross. He worked five state boys. Final Four, and two girls, and the only way you get to work at the state tournament is by a vote of the coaches. So that gives you a little insight from an athletic standpoint, the official that he was. 2003 was a big year for Dan. The Ohio PTA selected him as Superintendent of the Year. And the Ohio Music Association selected him as Administrator of the Year. And, he, and I found this very interesting. I didn't know it, and I know Dan well, but he's the past president of the Avon, Avon Lake Rotary Club. That's awesome. He's taught classes at Bowling Green, Ohio, Baldwin Wallace, he's been at Columbia. He represented the United States on an educational mission to Russia and China. Dan and his wife have been, Chris, have been blessed with four children and also blessed with seven grandchildren. And in closing, only I would say, that one of the challenges when you have the position he has, our predecessors have placed Ohio at the top. We're like the role model for other state associations. And the one thing you don't want to do where you're in that position he has is to do anything to take away what our others have done in the past. And let me tell you, this man has made a fantastic leap. Not only were, are we up above, but we're way up here now. They look at Ohio when they do their programs in the various states. And I would want you to know, and I'm not going to say this in Ohio, but this gentleman is the finest advocate for youth in their education in a country, in a country, not only for athletes, but more importantly, for non-athletes. And again, let me introduce you to a fine, fine administrator, but even a better person, the ninth commissioner of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, Dr. Dan Ross. Good afternoon, and Claire, thank you. CK, thank you very, very much for the work that you do. Uh, I'd like to commend you for what you do. The uh, scholarships and the youth programs, there's not very many opportunities that you have to touch tomorrow, and you have the opportunity to touch tomorrow every day with your service to young people, and I would like to commend you for that service. 
on your table, I brought a couple of packets. One of them is a manila sheet that says OHSA 101. And then there's a, a sheet with, it's white, that has all the brackets for all the playoffs. So some of you may be interested in who plays who and where they're going to play, and, and that is also on your table. Uh, what I wanted to do, walk through real quickly, is to talk about uh, OHSAA because there's a, probably a little bit of a difference between actually what we do versus what people perceive that we do. And part two is I want to tell you, because I believe that probably the most important thing we do is to help build life lessons for young people and, and give you some examples of some kids uh, who have done some wonderful things uh, exhibiting those life lessons. We're a 501c3. We're a voluntary membership. We have 821 high schools this year. Uh, and, and of those 821, most of our new high schools are all small Christian schools. Probably for the last five years, we've, had, we've added probably 16, 18 schools. Every one of them have been small Christian schools. Uh, there's a good part of that and a bad part. The good part is that they're members. The bad part is when they come in and they're small and they come in with 75 kids or 100 kids in their high school, we divide our playoffs into divisions and they're equal enrollment. So when you have all the new schools coming in at the very bottom, the people that are at the top end of that division, since you have equal numbers, are being pushed up into divisions that they don't believe that they belong in. So I guess that's an issue that we get to continue to deal with and that'll be okay. 856 middle schools. Uh, we are one of the few associations in the country that deals with 7 through 12. 24 different sports. And some of them that are on the radar screen. Lacrosse. Lacrosse, it takes 150 schools in order to be considered to be a member. That's going to be 150 out of the 821. Uh, we have 122 schools right now where the school is sponsoring lacrosse, and we have 24 club teams. So when you put them together, we are just knocking on the 150. So I would imagine probably within two years, lacrosse will probably be a sponsored sport. Some of the other ones that we, are, that we have on the radar screen, archery. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Northwest Ohio, Northeast Ohio, Southeast Ohio, archery is big. Now think about that. What are they going to do in the fall? It's a fall sport. They're all going hunting. I was at a school last Monday, and uh, they had probably 200 kids out, all the targets, and they're all shooting. And I said, well, gosh, is this one of your classes? They said, part of it's classes, part of it's kids for study hall, and they're trying, <laughs> they're trying to get ready for deer season. So uh, there's a, a method in their madness. Ultimate Frisbee. I don't know whether you've ever seen Ultimate Frisbee. It's kind of like golf with the Frisbee. It's a very, very fun sport, and it's, it's kind of one that is also inexpensive, kind of like archery. Archery is not an expensive sport. Rugby. Rugby is one that's kind of interesting because the U.S. Olympic Committee just added rugby to the 2016 Olympics. And so that will be the first time you're going to see it in the Olympics. And the assistant director for that, uh, for the U.S. Olympic for rugby is from Ohio, graduated from Bowling Green. So they've been coming back through and, and working with kids with rugby. Rugby's cheap. You need a a t-shirt, number on the back, a football, and you can play in a city park. So that's one of the, the pieces that, that keeps that. And you think, well, what about the concussion? The concussion piece isn't as, as high as it is probably with football, but the concussion piece is also one of the things with rugby that when you think about it, there's no helmets. So one of the suggestions for even for football is to take the face mask off because they're not going to be going face-to-face -face, uh, and drilling people without a, a face mask on your helmet. So two other ones that have come up even this fall that uh, <clears throat> really are not on our radar screen, but I thought I would give you an idea of some of the ones that we hear. Rodeo. Northwest Ohio, there is a rodeo circuit that comes through Northwest Ohio every summer. And when the rodeo circuit leaves, the phone calls to us start about when you're going to start rodeo. We're not. The other one that, that just came in a week ago, and it's one that I've never heard of, but maybe some of you have, sand wrestling. Anyone? It's a spring sport somewhere, but it isn't going to be in Ohio. 
But it was kind of interesting because the person was very, very passionate about we needed to start sand wrestling, and I thought, oh, I've never heard of it. So it must be some, I don't know about <laughs> Sounds like a grudge match. We have 400,000 athletes that are participating in our high schools. With that, that puts Ohio third in the country number-wise. California's first. Texas is second, and Ohio's third. And number of schools-wise, we're, th we're third. Number of kids-wise, we're fourth. We're 12,000 kids behind New York. So when Claren mentioned about the, where we stand, you, you don't really stop and think about Ohio being third or fourth, depending on the, the classification uh, across the country because of the number of, uh, and the size of many of those states. 17,000 officials. Anybody wants to know what we do all summer, we're in the process of certifying and getting our officials ready to go because August 1st, they have to be ready to go. And we have 17,000. We're probably second in the country with the number of officials that we have. 65,000 coaches. And one of the things that we did do, and we were one of the first states in the country to do, is coaches' education. That number of coaches the percentage of those who are no longer teachers is growing every year. It's probably 60 to 65 percent of the coaches are not teachers, they're coming from outside the, the school system. And so we instituted five years ago a coaches education program because we believe that everyone that works with youngsters should have some kind of training in the care, nurturing, and development of young people. And so every coach is now required to go through a coaches education program to get certified, and we believe very strongly with that. Our revenue, our revenue, we have no tax dollars. And that, for me, is a good thing. And Claire can probably assert this also, that usually on Monday morning, we get probably 10, 15 phone calls about the, we need to view the film because the team really shouldn't have lost because the official made a mistake. And usually after the third or fourth call from the same person, or the same school, they're going to reach their legislator and have our funding jerked. And we remind them they can have all of zero that they can get because we, get, we do not get a penny from the state funding. Ticket sales is about 80% of our revenue, 10% officials dues, and 10%. We have three major sponsors, Farmers Insurance, American Dairy, and Marathon Oil. So they are our three primary sponsors. For our members, <clears throat> and we are the only state in the country that does all five of these, there's no membership fee. We do not charge our schools to be a member of the association. And when they put their teams in the tournament, we do not charge for participation. There are many states that they either charge a membership fee, and some of them are fairly stiff, a thousand, two thousand dollars to be a member and then $250 for every sport that you're going to be in the tournament. We do not do that, and we do not do that for a very specific reason. Because if we have to charge, and, you, and when you stop and think you're dealing predominantly with the schools inside Columbus, and that would be affected by that, but if you're at Bloomfield Mespo up in Geauga County, I mean, when you go there, their school's not a whole lot bigger than this restaurant. And I said to them, okay, you now have to pay a couple thousand dollars to be a member, and for every team that you have, it's going to be 250. They're going to say to me, okay, what sports are we not going to offer? Because they're not going to be able to do that. And I want schools to have the opportunity to provide that opportunity for every child that walks through the door, if that's something that they want. And so we don't charge them for that. They get a bonus on their ticket sales. When they go to the tournaments, and you sell your tickets at the schools, we always suggest go to the school and buy your tickets because they get a 20% bonus off of every ticket that's sold at the high school, which is a great thing. We want that because it's an infusion for that athletic department, and that athletic department is now paying for many things out of the athletic department that used to come out of the general fund 20 years ago, 10 years ago. And so you're helping your school. Reimbursement on regional and state. When they come to the state tournament and they play in our state tournament, we cover their mileage, we cover their hotels. We returned $2.6 million last year to our schools for their involvement in our tournaments. 
and that may be one of the highest in the country. And the one that's probably the most expensive for us, but also probably helps, we cover all the catastrophic insurance for every athlete that plays in one of our sports in the state. And that's about an $800,000 hit to our budget, but honestly, they can't get it. If they have football or wrestling and they go out and try to get catastrophic insurance, it'll be very, very difficult for them to be able to afford that. So we also don't want them cutting tennis and gymnastics and golf and all the non-revenue sports because they have to pay their catastrophic insurance. So we pick that up for them. What we do, we believe very, very strongly in what we call education-based athletics. Education-based athletics means that the athletics department, the athletic activity is an integral part of your education. But the crown jewel is the academic portion of what that school has to offer. We are kind of the lab portion. Give them an opportunity to learn life lessons and we're going to talk about that in just a second. <clears throat> what are some of our duties? Conduct the best tournaments possible. We are moving the football the state tournaments to OSU this year and it'll be back for two, probably three. Uh, there's a lot of people that, are, that agree with you. Southwest Ohio, Southern Ohio, West Central Ohio, now their travel is probably going to be an hour and a half, two hours rather than four. And they're very, very pleased with that piece. At the end of that time, it's probably going to rotate and we'll be rotating back and forth between Stark County and Columbus. Our kids will have an opportunity to play in some of the best places, best venues in the country. Monitor the eligibility of student athletics. And, and sometimes this is one that you, we probably get uh, in the paper for or, or whatever. There are a set of rules, uh, by law and constitution, that our member schools vote on. Our principals vote on everything we do. Our job is the enforcement piece of that. And they set aside eligibility rules so that everybody is playing under the same set of rules for competitive balance. And we'll talk about competitive balance if we have some time at the end. Provide services to our member. We mentioned about co coaches' education. We have the largest booster summit in the country. There's hardly a week goes by that on the front page of some paper in Ohio that there isn't a booster, and it doesn't necessarily have to be athletics. It could be PTA, it could be band booster that has been involved in the misappropriation of some funds. And so we've been having booster summits to try to bring people in to say, okay, this is the appropriate way to deal with this. If you're a school person and you have that booster, this is the best way to put them under control, put them under your wing and do that. And sometimes the uh, boosters are driving the bus and the boosters got to remember that the school's driving the bus and then they're in the bus and they're a partner with that. Safe school zone. For us this year, this is probably one of the things that we're working really, really hard on. And this is after school, and this is not necessarily at the events on Friday nights. This is after school, what would you do if you're a coach and you're at practice and a youngster goes down? Let me use an example. Football kid, thank the good Lord that this wasn't in Ohio. Football kid at practice goes down during practice. The coach gets in his pocket, gets his cell phone, calls 911. Sends two kids down to the end of the field to open the gate so that the squad can get in. Sends two other kids into the school to get the AED. Well, the two kids come back, they can't get the gate open. There's nobody around that anyone knows has the keys. The two kids come back from looking for the AED and it's locked in a room in the building and they don't have the keys to that one. The AD is at a soccer match. The youngster passes. We are working really, really hard with our schools that when they start practice every season to take 15 minutes and review your procedures for how you're going to deal with a situation like that. Or and I'll use another one, and this is one that's not having from this position, but having been a school superintendent for a long time. Freshman basketball coach. It's normally not somebody that, that's going to be a lifer. It's somebody that's going to be new usually because the freshman coach moves up to be the JV coach, etc. 
freshmen usually don't get the prime 3.30 practice time either. Usually it's varsity boys and girls and they rotate, JV boys and girls and they rotate, and the freshmen are usually going to be later in the evening. Mom and dad are going to have to bring them, and then mom and dad are going to have to pick them up because they're usually not driving. That young coach, it's 9.30 at night. The principal's not going to be there at 9.30 at night, neither is the AD. If a youngster goes down in that practice, what's that person going to do? The only other adult probably in the building is the evening custodian. Your response is exactly like the last set of principles that I sat and talked to. Because they were looking at me like, oh, I didn't really think about that. Well, we need to think about that because we're dealing with kids. And so our work this year is working on this one. Five years ago, we had the same conversation about concussions. And truthfully, the high school venues have been way out in front on concussions. Our sports are much, much, much safer because we grabbed our trainers, we grabbed our doctors, and we're working really, really closely with them on our concussion issues in our schools and in our sports. Service week. We have a service week once a, a year. It's usually in December. And our service week this year is tied with Maria's message uh, with Dom Tiberi. And so we have, with our foundation, the, we had the largest leadership conference in the country about three weeks ago. We had about 1,500 kids that were here, and Dom was one of the pieces that we're trying to tie all of our leadership activities with our kids and their projects to Maria's message. And our sports medicine piece, as I mentioned, our concussion piece, we've been way, 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 way out in front. The new protocols that you saw in the House Bill 143 were our protocols. We've had them in place. Truthfully, at the beginning, that wasn't well received because there were an awful lot of people when you say, okay, the official sees a youngster and they believe he's exhibiting the signs or she exhibiting the signs symptoms of a concussion, then they take him to the sideline and give him to the coach. Well, what happens if the official graduated from the other school and he's just going to take our best player and take him over? I don't really care. If that youngster is exhibiting any signs for a concussion, they should not be in the contest. And they shouldn't come back in until the, the doctor has released them to be able to come back to play. Continue. This is what I believe our primary focus should be, is the focus on the life lessons that youngsters learn from being involved in high school sports and, and, and actually all extracurricular activities. What are those? Teamwork. Teamwork. Commitment, dedication. You got to follow the rules. If you get knocked down, you got a choice. You can stay down or you can get back up. Honesty, integrity. Let me give you a couple of examples of kids that have exhibited that, and we'll start with teamwork. In our state cross country tournament a couple of years ago, we have a young lady. Her name was Claire Marquardt. She was from Burton Berkshire up in northeast Ohio. She comes around the turn, and she's probably 400 yards from the finish line. You may have seen this on ESPN. She's about 400 yards from the finish line, and she drops flat on her face. And I'm standing from here probably to the chandelier from her, and I'm thinking, what, what happened? Because she just, I mean, it wasn't like she took a couple of steps and then fell. She just dropped. She broke both bones in her leg both of them at the same time. And she's lying on the ground, and I'm thinking, just lie, lie down. We'll get the bus out there to get you, and we'll get you to the hospital. But just Claire gets up on all fours and crawls to the finish line. Crawls to the finish line. I was dumbfounded. So I go up, and after she, she's come across... She's lying on a gurney. I said, young lady, I don't know who you are, but that was probably one of the gutsiest things. But why didn't you just lay down out there? We would have sent the, the squad out to get you. And she said, I didn't want to let my team down. I didn't want to let my team down. 
Isn't that the kind of teammate you want? It's certainly the kind of teammate I want looking for, and we're all on teams. I listen today to all the teams and things that you have going on here. You're always going to be a teammate for somebody, and there's not a better way to learn how to be a good teammate than playing in high school athletics. Perseverance. A young man in our state wrestling tournament, his name was Dustin Carter. He was from Hillsboro High School. Referee, or excuse me, he uh, participated in the state tournament his senior year. Dustin, you may have seen him in Sports Illustrated because the, about two years ago, the picture of the year in sports, you opened up Sports Illustrated and it was Dustin. <coughs> Dustin had no arms and no legs. Now you're going to say, how does a kid with no arms and no legs wrestle? I've seen Dustin wrestle probably 10 times, and I still can't tell you how he does it because I don't know. I don't know. But he made it to the state tournament. He won his first match, and on the second one, he lost. And there's 17,000 people in the Schottenstein Center giving him a standing ovation. He gets to wrestle back, and he lost that one, and he got another one for probably 10 minutes, and there wasn't a dry eye in that place. Dustin, at five years old, was told, his mom and dad, that he would never live. He had a, a disease, and they had to cut off his arms and his legs to save his life. And he said, if he does live, he's going to be in a wheelchair the rest of his life. And he said, not me. Nobody's going to tell me I can't do something. Perseverance. 17,000 people got a great lesson from Dustin Carter. Sometimes you may think you got it tough. You may think you have it tough. Think about Dustin. Think about Dustin. He went on wrestled at Mount St. Joe. I don't know whether any of you saw the thing with the young lady, Lauren Hill, in the sports center last night from Mount St. Joe playing basketball. But uh, Dustin... Great kid. Great kid. Two other ones real quickly because I don't know how much time I have. Integrity. Adam Van Houten. Adam's from Mount Gilead, Ohio. Adam won our state golf tournament by six strokes. No one close. He was the medalist by six strokes. He's walking off, got his medal. He's the state champion. Walking back to the car. He reaches in his pocket, pulls out his card, and he's just kind of going down through each hole. He gets to hole 10. And it was on Scarlet at, uh, at Ohio State. And he goes, I don't think I had a four on that. He said, I think I had a five. And he's walking with his coach. But he's saying this before he starts openly having the conversation with his coach. He's saying this to himself. I have lunch with Adam every summer because he's one of the most special kids you'll ever meet. So he said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to get on 10 and I'm going to walk. He said, my first shot went here, second one went here, third one was here. He said, I laid up. He said, I had a five. I didn't have a four. Adam turned around, walked to the table, and you know what happens if you sign your card and it's incorrect, and DQ'd himself. DQ'd himself. The only person in the world that knew. I asked him, would you do that again? He goes, I would never think of anything but doing that. He said, I have to look myself in the mirror every day the rest of my life. Right answer. Right answer. So last summer when I went to lunch with him, I said, would you still do? Because I ask him that every year. Every year it gets a little bit farther away from when it occurred, so you're hoping that he, he goes, you know, I said, is there any regrets? And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, one. And I'm thinking, oh, please tell me that you still would do the same thing. He looked at me and he goes, yes, there's one regret. You know how when you pull in town and they have that sign that has state champion or whatever on it? He said, they'll never, ever in Mount Gilead have my name on the sign 
for being a state champion. And I looked at him and I said, Adam, I think you did something much, much more important than that. And he goes, well, what was that? I said, you scribbled across everyone's heart in Mount Gilead that if there's a right way to do it, it's the Adam Van Houten way. That's better than any sign that will ever be outside any community. He's at uh, James Madison, I think, and he's finishing up at James Madison. He's golfing, had some injuries, but a great, great, great young man. And my last one, then we'll take questions. A young lady that was in our state track meet two years ago, actually this kind of, I had a wonderful opportunity because I was standing right there where this happened, but I probably would not have made it because on those weekends we have baseball going on, state baseball, state softball, and state track all in the same weekend. So you try to, to juxtaposition so you can get to all of those. It's like this week, as you have on your table, the brackets for, we have 112 games Friday and Saturday. We have our state soccer and our state volleyball this, this weekend. So just trying to make that work. The year before this young lady did this, I was at the state track meet, and there was a youngster, and he was from McDonald, Ohio, and he came around the, the corner in the 3200, and he got spaghetti legged. You know how you've been running, and all of a sudden it's hot, and the kid's giving you one of these, and you're thinking, oh, my goodness, is he going to make it or not? We falls about 400 feet from the, from the finish line, and everybody goes by him, and he can't make it, so we have to send the people out because once somebody touches him, he's DQ'd. So we sent the people out. They got him. They bring him in, put him in the tent. And I walked over, and I said, gosh, I'm so sorry that you didn't get a chance to finish. I said, but I understand you're a junior, and you're going to, I said, maybe next year you'll be able to come back and finish next year because I'd love to see you do that. So you've got to be really, really careful what you say because the week of the state tournament this past year, uh, I get an email, and it's from Eric. And he said, I made it to the state. Are you coming to watch me? <laughs> yes. So whatever my schedule was, I was going to be there that day, which that race was, and he ran, and he finished in the top eight. Wonderful. But I'm standing right there, and they're going to do the 3,200 for the girls. So I, I happened to be there because I was there to see Eric run. So I'm there. And I'm standing uh, right probably right next to the finish line. And there's a young lady who won the 1600. Her name is Megan Vogel. And Megan was from West Liberty Salem, uh, just outside of Springfield. And Megan uh, was going to try to double. The 1600 was about an hour before the 3200, and it was going to be tough. So she's running in the 3200, and she comes around the last turn and she's she's not going to win the, the race but she was going to finish so she comes around and there's a young lady in front of her about oh probably 30 40 yards who has the eric from the year before you know the spaghetti legs and her name's arden mcmath and arden's from arlington high school just outside of finley and so arden is doing the spaghetti leg piece and megan comes up behind her and she stops, and then Arden falls. Megan picks her up. You may have seen this on ESPN, too. Megan stops, picks her up, puts her arm over her shoulder, and carries her to the finish line. And when they get to the finish line, Megan stops, puts Arden in front of her to finish before her. I was dumbfounded. I was crying. I think everybody was 16, 17,000 people in the, in the Jesse Owens. They were all crying. So she finishes, and she finishes. She comes across the line, bolts right to the left, and goes into the infield. Man, I made a beeline for her. I said, young lady, I don't know who you are, but that was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And she looked up at me, and she goes, because she's about this tall, she looked up, and she goes, What? I said, the fact that you stopped to help her, and then when you got to the finish line, you put her in front of you? She said, well, that's what you do, isn't it? Yes, that should be what we do. 
We should all take time to stop and pick someone up that needs that help and put them in front of us and help them get where they need to go. Isn't that what service above self is? That should be the rotary piece that when somebody needs that, you stop, you help them, you pick them up, you put them in front of you, and you finish together. And that's what we're trying to make sure happens with our kids. And I know that's what you're trying to do with your service to youth. I appreciate what you do. Thank you for what you do. We're working really, really hard to bring our kids to the point where we get everybody doing those kind of things, but that's our goal. And it's a noble goal, and we're going to continue to work hard at that. Questions? Anyone? Yes, sir. Speaking of doing what you should be doing, do you have any programs about doing what you shouldn't be doing? For example, what happened to students, you know, the whole culture, what happened over there? Are there programs within the, our schools that we are doing? Yes, it is. And that one's been a tough one. And we're working with Steubenville also. Yes, ma'am. I'm a big fan of high school sports. And like well, this, time of, <laughs> yay, this time of year, though, it's um, very hard to find out, like Saturday, Friday, Saturday night, who's winning, who won. There's obviously rules against showing high school sports. And then is there a website you can go to to follow these teams? OHSAA.org. And you have up-to-date sports, mm -hmm. or is it just the next day? No, it's some of it's that evening, depending on if the school has submitted that. But TV is never... Uh, the STO and it's now Fox Sports will have a, a trailer at the bottom, and, may, and they may not get them all, but they're they're getting some of those. Yes, sir. There will probably always be at least parental pressure, hoping to divide <coughs> public, private, you know, create a new uh, athletic council, whatever, for you know, to create divisions. Do you see it? Obviously, you put it off. Well, the last vote of the principals that passed by about 100 votes to keep everybody together. We worked really, really hard for the last four years to make sure. I want every one of our schools to be together. I don't want to split, and we're going to work as hard as we can possibly work to make sure we hang that together. There's always going to be that issue because it was voted on back when I was a high school principal, and we voted against it. It was voted on when I was the school superintendent, and we voted against both of those. Uh, so it seems like about every 15 or 20 years it comes up. Hopefully it'll stay for another 15 or 20 and we can hang together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, here's a gift for coming in uh, from Argo and Lenny. Appreciate your being here. Thank, Thank you. you. You can see why we're so fortunate in Ohio to have Dr. Roth speak. See you all next week. Thank you.